uh, you just let me know or let Aiden and office at uccplymouth.org and we'll make sure you get signed up for that. I think that's it. Does anyone have anything else they want me to add? Okay, well wonderful. If there are issues on Facebook, we just want to make sure you let us know in the comments. We do want you to have a good experience if you're worshiping at home. If you do that, just remember that anybody can see your comments, and so we just ask that you'll be extra polite and uh, make your comments with God's love. So nice comments, please. Um, you can learn more about our UCC designations on the front side of our bulletin. Uh, during warring times, it's especially important that we name that we are a just peace church. This designation demands that we focus our attention as best as we can on nonviolence. It calls us, this designation calls us to offer the message to everyone that peace is possible. Thank you for being church with us this morning. If you really like the idea of membership, or if you view the idea of membership with a lot of skepticism, well, welcome to you. If you are single or partnered, welcome to you. If you like potato chips or kale chips, welcome to church. If you are a believer, a questioner, or a questioning believer, welcome. Bienvenidos. As we enter into a space of contemplation and reflection, let us know that no matter where we are, God is surely with us. So let's settle our hearts as we hear our prelude. Those who are able, please stand for the call to worship. Be praised, my Lord, because our sister, Mother Earth, sustains and rules us, and because she raises food to feed us. Be praised, my Lord, for those who pardon by your love and suffer illness and grief. No, 
Be praised, my Lord, for the cycles. None of us escape death, and so we must truly depend on you and on each other. Please join in our hymn, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, verses 1 through 4. invite you to remain standing or to be seated as you wish. Whether you're here or you're worshiping from home, we invite you to join us in the passing of the peace. If you're at home, you can send a text message or write a note that says, peace be with you. God's love is yours. You are beautiful. If you're here in worship, we invite you to send signs of peace to one another. If you don't want to engage physically, just sit down and hold up a peace sign. And that's the signal to please don't approach me. And if you do want to engage with people physically, we just encourage you to use elbows for now, uh, just to respect each other's space. We invite you, show each other signs of peace this morning as you wish.
like to we'd like to invite folks to move towards their seats. It's so wonderful that we all are so happy to see each other. We're just going to invite you to move back towards your seats, please. Peace be with you. And also with you. God be with you. And also with you. We lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Please join in the unison gathering prayer. Holy One, your love envelops all people, no matter their identities. We are scattered and yet together. on a Lenten journey, our hope is to find meaning in your path once again. May all dimness be clear from our vision as we welcome new members into our local church. Give us open hearts to welcome family and to receive your sacrament. Move us to reconciliation, God. We sense you are with us in the wilderness of Almighty Creator, we are tempted to dwell in self-pity, forget our neighbors, and neglect, neglect our relationship with you. The Lenten journey reminds us to collect our hearts for a deeper faith. You have given us an example of love. As we journey through the wilderness, let us find that this love is not only enough for us, but becomes multiplied for us to share. Seeking death, we sing together. We'd like to invite forward Ruth and Steve, as well as Peggy and Wayne and Carol. So Carol is here as a council representative. Peggy and Wayne are accompanying Ruth and Steve as they join this morning. We, um, we're congregationalists, so we're all saying yes to each other, right? This doesn't take just me or just Carol, or just our church, or just Ruth and Steve, it takes all of us. And so we've even invited some of our young friends up just so they could see this happen, right? It's very important for the life of our church when new members join. So in joining a church, we affirm our baptism in the faith, friends in Christ. Many of us are received into the church through the sacrament of, through the sacrament of baptism. 
Some of us sojourn through the world, reaching a Christian community like this one, Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ. Ruth and Steve have found nurture and support in our beloved community, in the midst of our family of Christ. Through consideration and reflection, they've been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their belonging at this church home, to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and with members of our church body. They are here for service to Jesus, using the gifts which the Holy Spirit has bestowed upon them. You are no longer strangers or sojourners. You are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God and many before us. Built upon the foundation of apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined. This is a holy temple. You are built for this holy temple, a dwelling place with Jesus. Hear these sentences from scripture. This is Jesus. He says, I am the vine. Anyone who abides in me and I in that person is one who bears much fruit. Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Ruth and Steve join the ranks of seekers throughout our community. They both love to ski and they like to be outside. Ruth, like many other beloved community members, is a clergy person, so that's really cool. And as I understand it, you guys have a labyrinth in your backyard, so that's pretty neat. If you want to learn more about them, we invite you to look at the back of our bullets, and there's some stuff listed there. There's a paragraph, and it's got some nice info, and I encourage you to get to know them in whatever ways you're comfortable. It's great to, to learn more about our new faith, faith family. Carol has some questions for y'all. Do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ and to step into this world of church and learn more about life in Christ through joining in covenant with our church? If so, please say, I do. Do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please say, I do. Do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the ways of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ? as best as you are able. If you do, please say, I promise, with the help of God. I promise, with the help of God. Do you, do you promise, according the grace given to you, to grow in Christian faith, to be a faithful member of the church, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? If you do, please say, I promise, with the help of God. We invite those who are here and those tuning in in any way to join us in our church covenant. We would like to invite you to rise as you're able, and we'll say our church covenant in the bulletin in one voice. So we invite you to join us. We covenant one with another to seek and to respond to the word and will of God. We purpose to walk together in the ways of the Lord made known and to be made known to us. We hold it to be the mission of the church to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ in all the world while worshiping God and striving for truth, justice, and peace. As did our faith ancestors, we depend on the Holy Spirit to lead and empower us. We pray for the coming of the kingdom of God and look with faith toward the triumph of righteous and eternal life. Uh, if you're a congregant out there, you may be seated. And Eileen, our worship coordinator, is going to invite you all to sign our membership book. And as you do that, 
very exciting. By your baptism and by your experience here in our faith community, you have been and you are being made one with all of us in the body of Christ and with the church throughout the world, the church universal. Today we rejoice in your journey of faith. All of these journeys that have brought you to this moment. We're so happy. We give thanks for all of the faith communities that have been your spiritual homes. And we celebrate your membership in this household of faith. Do you promise to participate in the life of Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ, sharing regularly the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this church as it serves the community? and the world. If so, please say, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. Will the congregation please join me in the words of welcome. Those are found on your bulletin, again, right under what you just read. You can remain seated. And together with one voice, we welcome you with joy into the life of our church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes, labors, and joys of life lived in Christian community. In the spirit of Jesus and laughter and love, may we continue to grow in faith, serving God and our neighbors. In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ, we extend to you the air five of welcome Maybe a hug one day soon, and we're so happy that you are here with us. This is the company of our church, and we are together as one unit and with the Church Universal. Here are some lovely certificates for you. I can promise the handwriting is nice because Eileen did it. <laughs> I invite you all to join me in a short prayer. Oh God, we thank you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the church, the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered in this church, and we rejoice that you have increased our faith community. Together, may we live in the spirit, building one another up in love, sharing life, and serving the world for the sake of Jesus. Amen. And again, we want to thank you guys for coming up. We're so happy to see you all up here. We want to welcome, yeah, Air Fives, you guys, can you get Air Fives? <laughs> Very cool. All right, we want to invite everyone to take their seats. Um, yeah, of course, welcome. We want to invite the whole church to rise as you're able and led for hymn number 332, and you can find that in your order of service. <laughs>
reading from the Hebrew Bible, Psalm 91, verses 1 to 2 and 9 through 16. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Our gospel reading is Luke 4, 4 verses 1 through 13. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority, for it has been given over to me, and I give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will all be yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. Here ends the readings from our tradition. May Holy Spirit join us for this Lenten journey. Let us find wisdom for today in these ancient words. O Holy Spirit, we pray you move between words and hearing. Amen. It is written, one does not live by bread alone. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve God only. It is written, God will command angels concerning you to protect you. If you're here regularly, you've likely heard me quote or reference a theologian named Reverend Dr. Cheryl A. Lindsay often in the past four months. I hope you like her. Reverend Lindsay is the National Minister for Worship and Theology. She also serves a local church. The reason I've used her words often as places to begin for our reflections is because the National Church has given us local pastors express encouragement to lean into her words as a scholar who is not of European descent. Beyond that, I find her to be extremely wise. And so once again, her guidance feels compelling this week. When she talks about Lent generally, she notes, Lent takes us into the valley, into the broken spaces into dry places. Yet this season offers its own perspectives of hope. Lent invites us into the deep work required for restoration to take place. 
We remember that demolition often proceeds building, and strong structures need sure foundations. We read in both Deutero-Isaiah, that's the second portion of the book of Isaiah, and in the gospel about sure foundations. The essence of what we read in these parts of scripture is that we should rely on God for our sure foundation. Our hope must be placed in the divine, not in things of this world. Do not live by bread alone, serve God, God will protect you. These are the scriptural references that Jesus names in the gospel text this morning. This is how Jesus places hope in God, in the creator, when he is in the desert, in the wilderness himself. Some of us have considered buying homes before, or we have bought homes before. We know that the foundation is an essential part of the home. We must be sure there are no holes. I looked at a house with a hole right in the corner one time. My mom said, no, no, you don't want to buy that house, Sarah. You don't want to buy a home that sits on mud or on sand. Or what about those homes that have sinkholes under them? You don't want that kind of home. I'm sure there are other questions about foundations that I know nothing about. But what we need is a sure foundation. Spiritually, we are encouraged by our text to look to God. Lent invites us into the deep work required for restoration to take place, which in the springtime, we're almost there, is something we're thinking about. Demolition proceeds building, and strong structures, structures need good foundations. In beginning to move towards restoration today, the lectionary calls us to this text of test. We read and hear about the ways that Jesus faced test. Exegetically, or from an interpretive standpoint, we might consider the perspective of the author. Sharon H. Ringe notes that there are no witnesses of this particular text. She writes, the narrative is not presented as something that Jesus taught, but rather as something that this omniscient narrator tells about Jesus. In other words, this is part of Luke's theological portrait of Jesus. It's telling us about the person of Jesus. Luke presents this as a real deliberation in which the devil pushes Jesus at three powerful possibilities and looks back to his religious tradition and Jesus offers God's word from the Hebrew Bible. So what might these powerful possibilities be saying to us? Do not live by bread alone. Serve God. God will protect you. Those are the scriptural references. One does not live by bread alone. We might reframe this. What are we living off of? What have we inserted into our lives that keeps us from the divine, that keeps us from God? Demolition precedes the building of a sure foundation. As we reflected on Wednesday night, on the evening of Ash Wednesday, the scholar we considered, Catherine Doherty, asserted that if something is keeping us from God, we must extract it relentlessly, she said. Relentless extraction. It feels very radical. Maybe it is for us individually. Maybe it is for us collectively. What keeps us from God? We must extract it. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve God only. And so we ask simply, what or who do we worship besides God? A wise person in this congregation recently said to me, it's very common that we want to idolize people, leaders, right? Be them uh, political leaders, church leaders. Why do we do it? How can we stop it? How can we recenter around God? 
It is written, God will command angels concerning you so that you are protected. Again, simple questions for the 21st century. Do we acknowledge divine protection? Are we in tune with the angels here among us? They are surely here. Today's invitation is not to pretend we are Jesus. Today's invitation is to find hope to find word, to find action in scripture. Today's invitation is to join sojourners throughout history. Today, knowing that with our failures, we still exist in God's love. Jesus is given a series of tests, and every single time, the direction that he goes is with scripture. I wonder if we can do this. That's a pretty countercultural thing to think about in our day to day lives, but I bet if we do it, we're going to be better off for life. We're going to be better off to live God's love. I think you can do it. Every single time, the direction Jesus moves is with Scripture. For those of us who are covenanted partners, covenanted partners, we must do this, for that's the promise we've made, right? It's challenging. It's a challenging promise we make as a church. It's also comforting. It's not one of us. It's all of us. We do not have to think that we are by ourselves, for we are the people of God, many voices for one love of God. Let us remember time and again that we are not being called to perfection. We are being called to community, to a table of reconciliation that's given to us in the sacrament, and even to places where we will fail, where we will struggle. Again, Reverend Lindsay, she notes, failure is essential to life. Lent may appear to be a time for failure. Last year, I tried to give up coffee, and well, I didn't make it more than six hours. <laughs> Perhaps you tried chocolate this year and you made it two days. That's a common one. Looking to scriptural wisdom and the experience of our faith ancestors, what we'll see is that Lent is a time to make space for God. The final part of our text today shows that Jesus says, Ha! to the devil. Do not put God to the test, Jesus says. And Reverend Lindsay put it this way. Jesus prepared for the test. Jesus has the answer and is the truth. The answer, Jesus will not fail. She even pulls a pop culture phrase out for us. Jesus will crush it. So be reminded, it is written because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high dwelling place, no evil shall befall you. You are in the body of God, the body of Christ. We are together. I pray that it will be so for us this week. In the, in the past two weeks, our congregation has helped more than three people with transitional housing. Steps towards recovery for at least two people. Support for food and clothing. We invite you to join us in supporting our community in the Lakes region. Myself and other staff members have been here to offer ears, to offer hands, to give people rides when folks have come in with needs. So if you write a check to our church or if you give online, you're giving to that. You're giving to an effort for staff to be here to respond to direct needs in our community. If you want to give directly to the people who are in need, you want to write your check for the Hope Fund. Our funds are getting a little bit low. It's not a crisis situation, but I just want to update the community. Whether you give to our church, whether you give to the Hope Fund, give as you're able and led. Give of your time. Know that our church is here to offer support for people. If you do send a check, make sure you send it to Post Office Box 86. We don't want your check to get lost. 
and it's uccplymouth.org if you're looking for how to give online. Please give as you're able and led. Join me in the offertory prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for your power of redemption, for your spirit of transformation, and for your persistence in love. We thank you, O oh God, for the saints of all ages, for those who in times of struggle keep faithful, for the souls who saw visions of larger truth and dared to declare the multitude of quiet and gracious souls whose presence has purified and saved. 
if you have not yet gotten a communion cup, just make sure you raise your hand so we can get it. So we need one in the choir, or do we need multiple in the choir? Could someone help us get some communion cups for some folks up here? Uh, one person, so one on the Allison side, two in front of us, and then it looks like the choir. Choir has what you need now? Super. We are scattered, God, in apartments, houses, condos, on counters, at dinner tables, on our couch and stretching on the floor. As we join in this historic ritual, let us know that this holy meal may strengthen us. Let us find renewal in this great communion. We, we are prepared, prepared, God, our, our tables and makeshift tables may be messy, but they are set. set. These tables are open. There are no prerequisites for God's love. This table is for those who believe a little or a lot. This table is for those who need community, those who need solace, and those who need strength. Let us share in this abundance. As people of faith, we name that God holds and hears all that is in our hearts, all that is in our minds, and even the things that are too mysterious for us to articulate. So we'll first turn to God in silence. O oh, holy God, it is written that we ought to become your love in the world. In the season of Lent, we recall the ways that we have struggled. We long to move closer to your great peace so that we might offer this to those we encounter. There are tests all around us in the world. We do not want to fall short, but we know that part of life is sometimes experiencing failure. God, let us find comfort in your great assurance, that which we find in the Psalms, that which Jesus leaned into when he was in the desert. Creator God, our hearts have gratitude for the simple joys of life, the ability to come together or to join virtually on this day, snacks which delight our taste buds and the fellowship of friends and family. We're grateful for those in our congregation celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Today, God, we are especially happy for new church family. You're so happy that Ruth and Steve have joined the sojourn with our local church. Holy One, on this Communion Sunday, we name that we can join all of our faith family in a historic moment of ritual. As one church universal, we join at this, your table of love, and we understand that there are sins of ours that we can name, and there are those of which we are not even aware. So God, we are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. Let us feel your deep love in our hearts and let us proclaim this in our actions and words. Creator God, we come to this table once again. We seek to be reminded of your affirming, your reconciling love. We are grateful for your holy meal. This reminds us of what is eternal. For this is your table reminding us of who we are, how we can reach out, and how we can be, move closer in your love. We're grateful that we can eat and drink of this meal for peace, for solidarity. As we are tested in the world, Holy One, let us recall what is written on our hearts, your love. There are many we pray for, God. We ask that you hold them, those in our bulletin. We are also, of course, God, lifting up the people of Ukraine before you, all in the surrounding regions for leaders throughout the world, that all would be pointed towards peace. God, we pray for all people dealing with the effects of oppression, ourselves included, for those dealing with depression, those who support them. God, we continue to pray for an end to white supremacy, an end to systemic racism. We're praying for all public servants. 
God, be with all of those who live outside and in shelters. Let us look to your, God, your love, holy God. For this weekend and this week, almighty creator, we have the comfort of your word, so let us find strength as we encounter tests. For you hold us when we fall away. Let us lean into your call, for you said, much is required of those to whom much is given. Let us know that we are hidden in your shadow, and God, give us charge on this very day. Amen. As a people of faith, we name that God holds and hears all that is in our hearts, or something like that. <laughs> Thank you. We remember that Paul the Apostle wrote letters to congregations throughout places we now call Greece, Turkey, and Macedonia, and they were the first remote worship resources. We call the narratives that the author of Luke has given to us. Our in-person and online service has a long heritage. The communion words sent to the church at Corinth have origins in the gospel. The words sent to the Corinthians read as the following. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please join us in a brief prayer of blessing. We give you thanks, creator on high, for you are also among us. You've called us forth as a world and as your people. You're raising us from dust by the breath of being. God, we bless you for the beauty and bounty of the earth, for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We remember the covenant you made with your people Israel, and we give you thanks for all of our ancestors in the faith. We rejoice that you call us to reconciliation with you and with all people everywhere. We're so grateful that you remain faithful to your covenant, even when we struggle. God, bless this meal and each one of us so that we may live in peace and that we may live out our faith in our daily lives. We pray all this for love's sake. Amen. If you haven't started opening your small communion set, please do so. As we take and eat this bread, let us open our hearts to receive the bread of heaven that we may never hunger again. And as we drink from the cup, the cup of life, the cup of the new covenant, may we be refreshed to take God's gifts to the world in all of its need so that we will ever make God's presence available to the people we encounter. Let us take and eat. Please join me in the closing prayer. Gracious and loving God, 
you have made us one in the body of Christ and nourished us at your table with holy food and drink. Let us be caught by the love given in the gospel and let us offer this to those we encounter. Send us forth to be your people in the world. Grant us strength to persevere in resisting evil and to proclaim in all we say and do the good news in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise as you're able and join in hymn number 197, Jesus, Keep Me Near the Cross.
on this day know that no matter the test before you, God will offer protection. Be assured by love. Become love to those you encounter. So as you go, tend the sick, share a meal, even if from afar or over the phone. If people ask you where you have come from, say to them that you are God's child and that you have seen love in Christ. Please be seated. Let us go. 